student, myself Dr. Rajiv Kumar. Today's topic is large dice two and defective index. These are the some prerequisites of this topic. When you finish this topic, you must have well worked with the test two of class, defective index of class. Objectives. By the end of this chapter, you will be able to explain how class is formed. List some of the characteristics of class. Provide example of different types of class. Calculate the density of the class. Use the refractive index to identify different types of class. Describe how class structures. Analyze class structures pattern. Introduction and history of class. In Egypt, 2500 BC, the earliest known human made class objects. 1st century BC, glass blowing began. 3rd century, specialized glass production was an art, a science, and a state secret in the Republic of Venice. 14th century, glass making spread through Europe. The Industrial Revolution applies mass production to many types of glass. Analysis of glass found at crime scene can yield great evidence. What is glass? Material used to create soda line glass. There is some composition to make in the glass. That is silicon dioxide, sodium oxide, calcium oxide. These are the mixture of for the preparation of glass. Once cool, glass can be polished, ground or cut. Crystalline solids have regular atom, atomic structure. Glass is an amorphous solid and brittle and so has an interrogator atomic structure therefore glass break in a variety of fracture patterns types of glass there is several types of glass according to their composition many types of glass like uh, soda line glass pirate glass porcelain glass tempered glass bulletproof glass etc adding metal oxide yields different colors like ferric oxide sulfur oxide zinc oxide etc different densities density depend on their composition, refractive index, refractive index is also one of the most important parameters of analysis of glass. These characteristics allow comparison for different types of glass and their identify their origin. Density of glass. Density measurement is one of the most important analysis for comparing the glass sample under investigation. The comparison of densities can give a proof of a connection if at all between a suspect and a crime scene. If the density of a sample glass specimen and the one under consideration do not match, then it can be proved that they do not share a common source or origin. But if the densities match and prove the origin to be common, then it becomes very easy to trace the types of glass used by the criminal to conduct the crime and can be helpful in leading the forensic expert to the suspect. Density can be actually useful to help knowing the composition of the glass sample. It is defined as mass upon unit volume of the sample. Density began an in Density property does not depend upon the size of the sample. In other words, it remains the same, regardless of the fact whether the sample is big or small. But it depends on the changes of the composition and is measured directly or by comparison. The measurement is used only if elementary analysis is not available. Density measurement should be done for sample more than 2 to 3 mm in size. These measurements are useful in identifying multiple source projects in the sample. Proper sample preparation that is density measurement will not be appropriate for cracked glass fragment or comparing bulk fragment. The crack in the glass sample can make the glass appear less dense than it really is. Density, measurement and comparison between known sample and the suspected sample should be done 
using fragments of equal size. Samples should be clean and dry since window glass does not have uniform density. So care must be taken to determine the variation in density of known sample from different locations. Also, the surface of the tempered glass is less dense than its interior. So one has to be careful to take a measurement of several known samples. Different methods for density measurements. These glass fragments under criminal investigation are very small and so the density of the such fragment can be determined either by rotation method or density gradient method. Both the methods are based on the fact that the glass fragment will float in liquid medium having density greater than that of the fragment, while they will sink in a liquid medium having density less than the fragment, but they remain suspended in a liquid whose density is same as that of the fragment. These methods are so accurate that they can distinguish glass particles that differ is density by 0.001 gram per cubic capacity. For the heavier liquid, bromoform or methylene liquid iodide is used. For lighter liquid, xylene, bromobenzene, benzene, nitrobenzene is used. The formula of calculating density is D equal to M upon V. Here M equal to mass measured by balance P device, V equal to volume, place the glass fragment into the beaker filled with the water and measure the overflow, D equal to density divided the mass in gram by the volume in millimeters. There is a table which is shown that the several types of glass density. Refractive index of glass. Refractive index is also a very important parameter for the analysis of the glass. When a beam of light moves from one medium into another, the speed changes, the direction bends. The refractive index, a tool used to study how light bends as it passes from one systems to another. There is some uh, so uh, imaginary line that is known as normal line, it is a perpendicular to the glass surface. When a beam of light moves from less dense medium that is air into a more dense medium that is water, what happens? The result is its speed slows and bent lights toward the normal line. Let's see what happens when we change the medium. When a beam of light moves from a more dense medium, that is glass, into a less denser medium, that is air, its speed increases and bends light away from the normal line. Submerger method. In submerger method, it is used when glass panels found at the crime scene are small. Place the glass fragment into different liquids known refractive index. The glass fragment will seem to disappear when placed in a liquid of the same refractive index. Similarly, we have some more different method which is known as rotation method and density gradient method. First one is rotation. The time and control glass piece sample are crushed into comparable size with similar shape which is one of the most important steps. Each piece of glass is briefly sketched and marked of references. A clean and dry sample of prime glass particle which is again an important precaution is placed in a small beaker containing bromophone. The glass will float on the liquid surface indicating that the density of liquid is greater than that of the glass. The less dense liquid xylene is then added slowly drop by with stirring until the particle is exactly suspended. 
one should be careful while adding the mixture that is that should be stirred with each addition so that air bubble if any are removed adding cylinder size clean and dry sample of control glass if both the prime and the control glass particles remain suspended in the liquid then their densities are equal to each other and to that of the liquid mixture particle with different densities will either sink or float depending upon whether they are denser or less dense than the liquid medium the density of the particles of the glass can be determined by the calculating the density of the flotation mixture using density meter a portion of the flotation mixture is transferred directly to the density meter and density is thus recorded next method is density gradient method density gradient method is good method for examining the glass fragment when there are number of glass fragment that is several unknown sample or several possible sources in this method a vertical glass tube about 5 mm in internal diameter and 10 to 18 inches long is sealed at one end and filled with successive layers of liquid in decreasing density in other words the gradient is such that the density at any level is less than that of any level lower in the tube and greater than that any level higher in the tube the standard gradient tube is made up of layer of two liquid mixed in varying proportions so that each layer has different density backline method in a backline method a halo like effect appearing at the edge of a glass fragment when the refractive index of the glass and liquid are different if the line is inside the glass perimeter the glass index is higher than the index of the liquid if the line is outside the glass perimeter the glass index is lower fracture pattern in broken glass being an amorphous solid and brittle glass will not break into regular pieces with straight line fractures fracture pattern provide clue about the direction rate and sequence of the impact here in this picture we can see the image of fractures there is two bullet fired in a piece of glass and create a fracture why radial and concentric fracture form impacted glass is compressed on the side it is hit it will stretch on the opposite side of the glass and the tension here will be radiate break in the glass outward from the point of impact that is known as radial fracture then fracture from the shape of the concentric circle on the same side of the impact that is known as concentric fracture you see the picture here radiating out from the point of impact these lines on the radial radial fracture and the making a circle around the point of impact which is shown in blue lines that is known as concentric fracture these are the diagrammatic view of fractures here we can see the radial fracture and concentric fracture bullet fractures as a bullet passes through glass it pushes a cone shaped pieces of glass out of the glass ahead of it the exit side of the hole is larger than the entrance side of the hole radiating fracture line from the subsequent shot builds stop at the edge of the fracture lines already present in the glass the angle at which bullet enter window glass help locate the position of the shooter bits of the glass can fly backward that scatters creating trace evidence which is very important for the forensic examiner handling of crime scene glass sample identify and photograph any glass sample before moving it collect the largest fragment that can be reasonably collected identify the outside and inside surface of any glass 
if multiple pins are involved, make a diagram. Note trace evidence such as skin, hair, blood, or fibers. Package all material connected to the maintain the chain of custody. These are the references of this presentation.